All right, so Raw this week, let's do this quickly. It opened up with a Randy Orton coming out, and of course, Matt Riddle immediately interfered, and he wanted Randy Orton to uh, team up with him, and he said, I know why you gave me the RKO. You were just trying to teach me how to hit a proper one. And of course, Riddle still wants nothing to do with this guy. AJ and Omos come out, and they make challenges for matches later on in the evening, which happen to be matches with uh, RK Bro, even though they're not officially a team. And it begins with AJ Styles and Riddle. And in the ring, in terms of wrestling, if you want to see a good match on Monday night, I got a good match for you. AJ Styles and Riddle. Impossible to have a bad match. But you know what's not impossible? To have a bad finish. Riddle's making this big comeback, and he's distracted by Omos. I'm sure you're thinking, oh, well, of course he is. There's always distraction. Well, what you were not expecting was that Omos didn't do anything. He was standing there, and all of a sudden, Riddle went, there's an eight-foot man outside the ring. And he was distracted, and AJ crotched him and hit him with the Styles Clash and pinned him. Riddle, dumb babyface. But, of course, nothing new. They they uh, cut to Nikki Ash, and everyone goes, yay! And then Nikki Ash starts talking about confidence and her superhero costume. And you can hear... Boom! Because nobody wants to see the gimmick. But they like Nikki Ash. But it's WWE, so we're just going to barrel through with all of this. Despite what you fans want, you're going to like it. We had Rhea Ripley versus Nikki Ash. They went eight minutes, and let me tell you what happened. Rhea Ripley beat her up, and she beat her up, and she beat her up. Nikki Ash got a move. Rhea beat her up, and she beat her up, and she beat her up. Nikki got a move. Rhea beat her up, beat her up, beat her up, beat her up, booted her, hit her finish, and pinned her. Nikki didn't even get a comeback. Nikki Ash, for those of you that aren't paying attention, is the Raw Women's Champion. Her In storyline, she sucks, but she has confidence that every now and then she can sneak a win. Well, she couldn't sneak a win tonight. And because it's Raw and we have like eight people on the active roster, this sets up another match with Rhea and Nikki Ash. Not next week, tonight, here on the show. We had Drew McIntyre versus Veer and Shanky. So here's the story. Drew's got a big sword he's named after his mother. As a dangerous weapon. And Jinder Mahal is scared of this sword because he doesn't want Drew to skewer him. Shove this sword down his throat like a sword swallower. So anyway, they have a match tonight. It's Drew McIntyre against Veer and Shankly. And the storyline is, if Drew wins, Veer and Shanky cannot come to ringside with Jinder Mahal. And Drew McIntyre can bring his sword, as they call it. But if Veer and Shankly win, they can go to ringside, and Drew cannot bring his sword. Now, Drew is a babyface. He's a big star. Nobody cares at all about gender. So it makes sense that somehow Veer and Shankly would win, maybe by countout or DQ, and then Drew will not be able to bring his sword to SummerSlam, and Jinder can come to the ring with two men to, to, to have the odds stacked against Drew McIntyre. Well, you know what they did? Drew won. So now it is Drew versus Jinder. Jinder can't bring his back up to ringside, and Drew is allowed to come to the ring with a sword. I like this. Color me excited for this match. I like this, though. (laughs) Well, I mean... Here's why. Here's the only reason why. why. This is the only reason. Let me finish, and then you can tell me why. Let's get through this. Got it. We had Morrison doing, uh, what is it called, Moist TV with his, his, uh, his guest, The Miz. And the whole story here is that The Miz admits, I've been cleared for weeks. Well, he didn't tell his best friend Morrison, so now Morrison is upset about this. Why didn't you tell me? Why have I been wheeling you around in this wheelchair and, like, saving your life, and you've been cleared this whole time? Out comes Damian Priest. And, bro, I mean, come on. Damien Priest shoves Miz into a kiddie pool. I was that ever going to get you over? I was mocked and ridiculed for this spot for, for like, over well over a decade. We but, bro, if you're going to take a bump into a kiddie pool, like, sell it. Well, Miz doesn't even sell it. This leads to the Miz versus Damien Priest. Horrible match. 
Miz cannot physically do anything. The match is there for him to just be a coward and a fool. And then Priest beats him. And the whole key is Miz wanted the drip stick. I guess because if he had the drip stick, he might beat Damian Priest. But Morrison wouldn't give him the water shooter. And he ended up getting pinned. Which sets up Sheamus versus Priest. How does this set up Sheamus versus Priest? Well, Priest pinned him with the brogue kick. That made Sheamus mad. <laughs> Eva Marie, in the most horribly acted segment since the last time they did a segment, tells uh, Dewdrop, bring me the doll. So Dewdrop has to go get the doll. Well, she goes to get the doll. She grabs it from Bliss, who is playing a 10-year-old on a swing set. Are you sick of this yet? I am. Uh, Dewdrop looks at the doll. Oh, she gets scared. She gives the doll back. Then they announce Eva Marie versus Alexa Bliss at SummerSlam. Mansoor versus Mace. Uh, Mace squashes him for one minute and 56 seconds. And then there is a, uh, a kick behind the ref's back. And uh, Mansoor rolls him up and pins him. So they got a, 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 big, a big victory there for old Mansoor. Randy Orton versus Omos. Omos beats him up and beats him up and beats him up and beats him up and beats him up for the longest three minutes and 46 seconds of my life. Omos tosses him over the top rope. AJ's outside the ring. AJ looks at Randy Orton. The ref goes, don't touch him. It'll be a DQ. So AJ kicks him for the DQ. So anyway, afterwards, they go to beat him up, and Riddle runs down, and he makes the save and clears the ring, and and Randy Orton gets up, and he says, I used to respect you, but then I didn't. But you know what? I turned my back on you. I walked out on you. I RKO'd you, and you still came out. So, kid, you earned my respect. And everyone goes, yay! And Riddle goes, yippee! And he shakes his hand, and they hug, and they announce it is... It is actually a lot better than I'm recapping it here, but I've just been broken by the show, so I don't have the energy. But anyway, I liked what they did, and now it is uh, RK Bro versus Omos and Styles for the tag team titles at SummerSlam. Like, if I cared, I would really hope that uh, RK Bro wins, but, like, I got, I got so little faith that I'm not getting my hopes up. But they should win... If this were any other promotion on the planet, they would win. But it's WWE, so it's like, whatever. For the third time, Karrion Cross faced Jeff Hardy. Karrion Cross beat him in 50 seconds. I don't know why they bothered. But the good news is they didn't beat Karrion Cross as he faces Samoa Joe this coming weekend at TakeOver. Eva Marie slapped Dewdrop for being a failure. We had a Reginald. Uh, he was at the park. And then uh, our truth is dressed as a tree, and Tozawa's dressed as a garbage can, and they try to attack him, but he does a bunch of flips, and he escapes. Elias is dead. In storyline, he's dead. He's got a tombstone. Elias, 2017 to 2021. He was four. Now he'll return with some new gimmick, I guess. Charlotte and Nia face Nikki Ash and Rhea Ripley. Uh, Nia goes for the Vader bomb, but Charlotte blind tags herself in. She tosses this geek Nikki A.S.H. off the apron. She hits Rhea Ripley with natural selection. She single-handedly wins the match. Anyone here excited for the three-way on uh, Saturday? Uh, This didn't do it for me. Maybe it did it for you. And then finally, we've got a uh, situation with Lashley and Goldberg. Goldberg's son who, yes, I know he's not Hook, but that's the joke because he looks just like young Hook. He's out there in, uh, with his, his football team, and Goldberg talks about how I came out of retirement for you, Gage. And you can go on the Internet and you can see videos of your father and who he used to be, or you can show up and see who he is today. And it's like a great speech by Goldberg, a great fatherly speech. And then Lashley comes out and threatens to retire him, and uh, then Lashley says, a, or Goldberg says a naughty word we can't see here on the air. And they have a kerfluffle. You know those kerfluffles they have on every Raw? And Goldberg spears him, and everyone cheers. And Goldberg celebrates with Gage on the barricade. If it were any other promotion, Goldberg would beat Lashley and win the title for his son. But it's Raw, so I'm sure he's going to fail, and his son will be killed for your enjoyment on Saturday at SummerSlam. 
If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.